Hello everyone and welcome back to our 2D tutorial game series. In this video we are going to carry on with our character and set up the animations for our character to be idle and walking around our scene using the multi-directional to paper ZD animation sequences to help us do this. So let's get started. So last time we were here we managed to get our character sprite in there, we've done the setup for it but we haven't added any animation to the character to animate in different directions and, and so on. So the first thing I need to do is turn it off so it doesn't rotate according to movement like this. We want it to stay completely static. So let's first of all go to our character. And go to our third person character. And go to character movement. And scroll down to the rotation settings. And you just want to turn off rotation, orient rotation to movement. Just turn it off. So now when I move around the scene, my character won't spin around in circles and do like break dancing okay so obviously now we need to animate the sprite doing its thing so if we go back to our 2d character setup and go to animations we did this in the last episode we went through and created the animation blueprint the animation source and the idle and walk animation sequences you're going to go into the animation blueprint and in the animation blueprint, it works very similar to the 3D character animation blueprint in Paper ZD, uh, where you have an event graph and you have an anim graph. The event graph fetches and reads information and, and stores it, whereas the anim graph will use the information to, to determine what final output would be in place. So we're going to use a state machine, just like we would if we had a, a 3D animation blueprint. So I'll call it slow motion and open this up. And we're going to go from out here into an animation state. And let's name this one idle. And then going to come from out there into another animation state. And we'll call this one moving. And don't forget to add a line back from moving to idle. Back to this in a second. We're then going to go into our and here I walk animation cycle. So at the moment, the walk animation is just going down like this. But we want to do left, right, and up as well. So let's first we'll create the flip books we need for this. So let me go back to my character sprites and find my walk animations for this. So we've got walking down, walking up by the looks of it are here. Uh, there. Okay, flip book. Walk. Down, uh, walk up, sorry, and always open up and double check it, make sure it looks okay. Yeah, it looks okay. Compared to other ones, make sure it's sort of same sort of speed. Um, then we want to do right and left, so let's do uh, this one, do this one. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, flip book. Walk right. Again, always double check it. Yep, happy with that. And finally, you've got walk left, which we go from there to there. Okay, so you've got your four directions of your walking. Up, down, right, and left. I'm going to go back to my walk animation sequence which i can do here here i walk and on the top right you'll see an option for multi-directional sequence you know tick this and you get this new interesting display come up and what this does is you can design basically which direction you're going in the animation you'll be using so for this down one here we're going to use walk down for up we're going to use walk up left we'll do walk left and right will use walk right and if i click and uh sorry, if i uh shift no shift yeah shift and drag my mouse around you can see how the character sprite is changing so at the moment we're doing a four directional one but if you are doing like an eight directional one you can easily change it by just changing this end number up here to however many directions you're doing but as soon as we're doing four only we can leave this as it is okay and hit save on that and we can Close it. So now we go back to our animation blueprint and we're going to idle and we're going to add our idle animation to this. 
So uh, we need to do play hero idol. Put that in there. And I'm moving. We're going to do hero walk. Okay, and then to get it to actually register which direction we need to go into, we're going to drag the animation pin here and type in direction. You'll see set directionality. Plug that in there. And here you've got an input. The input determines which direction you're going. And so what we're going to do is drag it from there and do make vector 2D. And we're now going to get that from our player character's velocity. So at the moment, we don't have a reference to our character, no variables over here at all. So let's go create that on our event graph. On our event graph, we're going to go on the event on init, which is when it first initializes. And we're going to use the get owning actor. And here we can actually cast to our particular one if we want to use that. We can do cast to our third person character. Plug that in and then promote that to a variable. Go back to my moving. I can now drag my third person character reference out. And from there, I can get this velocity. And get velocity. And I'm going to break this open. So I'm going to split that. And I only want X and Y. I'm not worried about Z in here. So X into X, Y into Y. And there you go. Compile. So now let's go take a look at that in action. Oh, first of all, we have to set the transitions. So idle to moving, we're going to here, and it will only do this when the speed of the character reaches a certain threshold. So we take out our player character reference, velocity, and velocity, and we'll do vector length. So if this is greater than zero, do this. Uh, in fact, actually, what I'm doing is I'm going to copy this and go to event graph and just put that on here. Promote to variable and make that speed. So it saves me doing it multiple times. I can just do it once here and then just call it in places like this. Speed is greater than zero. Uh, go back to the other transition. And this is when speed is equal to zero. Compile, save. Close all that. Now let's go back to our game. Okay, so it's not working, so I've done something wrong. Let's take a look what I did. And, oh, it's because I put the speed update on the init. We don't want, we want this to update all the time. So we're gonna take that and just put that up on our tick event up here. That way it does it more than once. Okay, now let's take a look at that in game. And we can move around. So at the moment, direction, as you can see, is a bit twisted. Because if I push right, it goes that way, that way, that way. And that's because my control rotation is a bit messed up too. So if I move the mouse, it's messing up my control rotation. So let's take out that on the character. So go third person character. And on the camera input, we're just going to delete this. And it shouldn't be affecting any control rotation now. And instead of left and right going based upon the control rotation, we'll make based on the actual world direction. So the world direction here be left and right is in the Y. And I'll know that by looking at the gizmo down here in the bottom corner. So we go to Y and just put in one. And then on the forward and backwards, we just get this, this, and that'll be in X. So when I play the game, and uh, the movement's correct, but you see the animations are incorrect. Now, the reason why this happens, it depends entirely on which way you're orientating your game and your character. So at the moment, we're doing treating X as up rather than Y as up. So if you ever do it like this way, um, you can either rotate it around the whole world, or what we're going to do instead is we're going to go into our animation blueprint, and where we're getting the velocity of the character, and put it into directionality, we're just going to swap these around. 
So now I go up, he looks up, I go down, looks down, and he goes right, looks right, and so on. So the last thing we've got is his idol. So his idol's always facing down like this. So let's fix that up. And we go to idle. And we're going to add in also multi-direction for this one too. So let me create the flipbooks for those. So there's that one. Uh, there's idle for this one. Do idle up. Uh, let me rename this one. Idle down. Um, the book idle right and idle left. Okay, and then we go into our thing here and put idle up. Oh, there, idle down. There, left, and right. Okay, save that. Close that out. And close that one as well. And we go back to animation blueprint. And we're going to do a very similar thing here where we get the velocity and directionality. We're going to take all this, copy that, and we're going to go to idle, and we're going to place that here too. Now, at the moment, the this is only getting the velocity of the character as is right then, okay, uh, to work out which direction they're going in. But obviously, our velocity, if we're standing still, is zero, so that kind of makes no sense. So, what we have to do is we're going to do last input vector and split this one. And again, you might have to twist this around like that. And that'll take whatever last input we used as the direction. So the big difference that we're going to have here is the velocity won't work. And that's because obviously when we're idle, we're not moving. So it's going to equal zero. Hence why I'm looking always to the right. So we need to make it only re record that information when we have stopped moving. Uh, when we start moving and then stop, we don't record that information anymore. So on this get velocity, uh, we're going to take that and we're going to copy that, go to our event graph, and on event tick, we're going to take the speed here and we're going to say if the speed is greater than zero, and we put a branch in, put that into the branch, and then we'll paste our velocity checker in here. And we want to store these as our vector. So we're going to do um, a new variable, last movement vector. And that'd be a vector 2D. And put that in there. And we'll drag that out and set that and split it. And we'll put the X and Y in switched around as we are using. And we go back to our idle animation. And instead of using this one, we'll be using our last moving input vector. So that value should only change when we're moving. So now if I go back to the game and So I'm going to walk around. I'll stay looking in the direction of moving in. So there you go. We've now got our character set up and ready to go. All we need now is a game. So let's start working on an interaction system for our main player character. So we can interact with things like chess, doors, people, etc. You can watch the next episodes right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.